You ready for a great service today? Yeah. Come on, church. Let's just pray for a while here. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I just pray right now that you would break through every person's heart today. You would break through every person today in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I just pray that the Holy Spirit will flow like never before. Lord, I just pray that you'll be lifted up today like never before. Lord, I just call on your presence. We call on your anointing. And we're going to see, Lord, what you can do today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just so you all know, we're going to have Saturday night and Sunday morning service. So if you're not going to make it today, you can come tomorrow morning as well. And we're going to flow in the presence like never before. The same messages, but of course, preach differently. I can't preach the same twice. It doesn't work. I tried. It just doesn't work. So we're going to go for it. We're still in our Believe series. It's going to be powerful. If you missed the last two series, you can go online and watch it. The first one was Believing is Committing. When you believe, you've got to commit to what you believe. If you don't believe, if you don't commit to it. And then the next one after that was Believing is Trusting. And so if you don't trust in what you're committing in, you really are not successful. Believing is way more than a confession, way more than a word. It's an action. Amen? Amen. And so today we're going to talk about something different in the belief series. And, um, whoo, my phone, where are you? Oh, there, I like that. And um, so today we're going to talk about believing is having confidence. So we talked about removing fear with the song there is that fear needs to be removed. Amen. And when we do remove fear, we got to go out with confidence. I think the biggest thing that stops us from going in confidence or having confidence is the fear. The fear of something to move us forward. And you can, another word that you can translate confidence is in boldness. That we need boldness to move forward with everything we have. Amen. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus. I feel that God is going to do something. I, I don't know. Like, um, I, when you always, when you start something new, there's always something stopping us. There's usually something stopping us. And so when we need to walk into something new, it's important that we need to break through, right? And I feel like right now is a breakthrough moment, and I feel something holding. What's holding you guys back? What's holding you back? What's holding you back? Come on, just say nothing. Nothing. Just confess. I'm not holding back. We're moving forward. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to break this. We're going to break this culture, and we're going to see God in the culture. Amen. Amen. Yes. I am so tired. I'm not seeing God in the culture no more. I'm so tired of, of, of just these small pockets of revelation, these small pockets of revival. I, I want to see an explosion. What about you? We are in revival, but I want to see an explosion of what we have. I want to see an explosion so big that nobody can hold back. Everybody desires it so badly that they don't know what to do with it. Amen. That's the kind of explosion I want, and I believe it's coming. But I'm telling you, there, like that first song, there is a battle. Uh, the scripture, I'm sorry. There, there is a battle. There is a battle. And we need to fight through this battle to see where God is going. Amen. We are in a season to take one step at a time. We're, we're in that season. Like, I really don't know what the next step is. Like, even for this Saturday night, I'm excited. I feel, whoa, this is good. Things happening. I have no idea who's going to show up. I have no idea what's going to happen. We're just taking another step. We take another step. The next Saturday, we're going to take another step. And hopefully you all tell people how great it was and we go, go deeper. And all you guys watching out there, maybe you guys will come out and just see what God is doing together. Together we can do better. Amen? Amen. Yes, that's not mine. That's not mine. But today we're going to go into this place of a believing. I believe that this series is, was shown to me that God says that we need to not just talk about believing. We need to, we need to find out how to believe. And, and if we want to this move that we're in, if we want to move forward in this move, we need to know how to believe to move forward. We need to know how to get forward. We need to know how to step forward. We need to know, we need to know how to believe what we're feeling. We need to know how to believe in what God is saying. We need to know what to believe what he is doing in our life. And we need to know how to believe for it because there's a stagnant time that's going to come if we don't go forward. And we're going to come into this law. And there was a transformation or a trans. there was from a, a seed. We were a season. Sorry, we were moving to a different season. We're, we were moving from this, wow, cool experience time to, to a season of harvest right now. And the season of harvest is work. Uh, thank God for the rain that we could rest a little bit. But the fact, <laughs> some farmers are saying, no, I didn't want to rest. I wanted to get it done. But the fact is this. I just heard that we had close to four inches or so. Like crazy rain. Eh? And that's the kind of crazy rain we're going to have in the spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's, come on. Let's. 
God always relates natural to spiritual. Come on. God always relates. He, he, every parable was both natural to the spiritual. Every one of them. I'm telling you that if you think I'm crazy, then so be it. But this rain represents something in the spiritual because there's something flowing over. I mean, I had a downpour when I was busting. I couldn't even see where I was going. The kids had to go, whoa, quiet so I can focus. You know what? There's that thing. Devil, quiet so I can focus. I am in the rain. I got to see where I'm going. I got to see where God is taking me. I got to see where the presence is taking me. Shut up, devil. I'm going forward. Amen? That's what I do. I, everything I do because I'm spiritual. That's who I am. I am the God man that, that follows Jesus Christ. So when I see something, I relate it. Amen? And then the hail comes. I say, oh, no, you're not denting me at all, man. <laughs> no, we're not denting. We're moving forward. And you know what? My daughter was brave enough to walk in. It's, come on, we don't stop because of hail, amen? We don't. We come against the hail and say, no damage comes to our harvest. No damage comes to our harvest, naturally and spiritually speaking, amen? So, church, we need to wake up. Wake up and smell the rain, <laughs> amen? <laughs> smell the rain. Like, we got a lot of it, I'm telling you. You know, the spiritual life is a mess because the rain out there is a mess. I'm telling you that we got puddles everywhere. Wherever you're going, you're going to be sunk in the presence. Come on. You're going to get wet with the presence every time you take a step. <laughs> every time you drive somewhere, we're going to get splashed with it. That's how much there is out there. Hallelujah. You're going to get soaked. You're going to come in. Oh, my goodness. I'm wet with the presence. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> that's, all. that's where we are at today in the spiritual. Come on. I know we're there. Before the rain came, I knew we're there. This rain just proved it and showed us a good example of what it looks like to be soaked in the presence of God. Amen? Come on. We need to be soaked to the point where it's not about us no more. That we don't care how, how our hairstyle looks. Though I do, but we don't need to worry about it. <laughs> we need to say, if we're going, even if I'm wet, and we're going in the presence of God. Amen? Come on. And so we are on the move. We are in a big time move. Excuse me. Sorry. That was a Canadian part of me, sorry. Hallelujah. Woo! We're going to break through here yet. If you're not going to help me, I'm going to do it myself. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And so I, I, I feel God is saying this. It's saying that we got to believe to a whole new level. A whole new level. we got to believe like we never believed before. And I want to know how to do that. Where we're going, we got to believe it in a whole new level. A level where we never believed before. A level that we never imagined before. A level where we thought it was impossible to be. You look at simple things like the cell phone. 1995, we thought it might have been impossible to get a computer on your phone. We're going places in the spiritual where we thought we could never be. But God's technology is improved. And he says, we're ready. We're ready for the best. We're ready for more. Amen. And so we go in that place of saying, okay, there's an increase happening. There's a flow happening. But how can I believe to stay in the flow? What do I have to believe for to flow with it? How do I believe, God? I, I've talked to a lot of people and, and, I, and, and we sit together. I've been ministering to a lot of people lately. It's just been a lot of fun, um, but seeing a lot of results. But they sit there and say, so I said, do you want this? Well, I would hope so. I hope I could do it. And I say, that's not how you believe. That's absolutely not how you believe. Right? That's just not how you believe. And you sit down and say, hallelujah. And they say, yeah, I want that. So, so you want it now? I, I hope I get it. I don't know if we know how to believe because we would have believed, right? And I'm, I'm including myself. Like when I'm the minister, I can believe for anything for somebody else. But when it comes to me, I, 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 I don't, let's not even go there. Because then, you know, I doubt just as much. I mean, I, I, we are all in that spot, right? We're in that spot, spot and saying, my circumstance is so near to me and I'm so blinded by it, I don't know how to believe to get out of it. But when we see somebody else, we can go hug them to death. We can love them and love them right out of their problem almost, eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> I'm getting some Canadian going on here. Boy, we're going to get this American Canadian yet, amen? <laughs> and, and so that's what I see. I see it so much that it bugs me. So I said, you know what? We've got to find a way to believe. Believing is committing. 
believing is trusting. You cannot believe in something you don't commit into. You're just lying to yourself if you say you believe something and not commit into it. You're lying to yourself. Then when you believe in, if you say, oh, yeah, I believe you, Jesus. Use me. But if you don't trust him to use you, you're not believing. You're just not believing. Then we say, yeah, now I got the committing down. I've come to church. I have family of God. I, I'm in relationship with Jesus. I have devotional time. I mean, if you don't want to use devotional, I have some loan time, secret place time. Like, come on. You know, I have it going. So now you have commitment. And now you trust him. But now with the, what he's given you to trust with and he's get, equipped you with, how do you have confidence to use that? That's where we're today. So believing is having confidence. In Hebrews, in Hebrews um, chapter 4, and if I make mistakes, read it up there and correct, my, correct me in your head. Hallelujah. <laughs> but either way, it's uh, because I won't probably make mistakes because my reading is just that way. So I might even go paraphrase majorly and you say, I better see what he's exactly saying, you know. Yeah. Hebrews 4, 6, 14 to 16, it says this. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to the confession. I love this. He says this. He says, this, seeing then, like see it. You have the confidence of knowing what you're seeing. You, you commit it, now you trust, now see it. See what's happening here. He says, see that we have a great high priest. Everybody say great. great. Yeah, it's so great we never had it before. It's just amazing, Jesus Christ. Amen? But I love what he says. Priest, who has, past tense, passed through. Has passed. Past means he has journeyed through the heavens. He has traveled through the roads that we would need to go. He's traveled in the place where we can pass. Every step that we need to take to the heavens, he's been there. He's been in every step of his life. So if we follow him, those steps are already taken for us. Amen? So he passed through the heavens. And the heavens is this, a place where the heavenlies are, the place where the, where the throne room is, the place where God is ready to, to give out gifts, to give out blessings, the things that he promised is waiting for us. But we've got to walk through where Jesus passed through. We've got to walk through because Jesus passed through the heavens for us. He already made it. He says, because he's walked through, because he's passed through the heavens, hold fast to your confession. You've got to hold fast to the confession because you know the confession is real. If you don't have confidence in the real confession, if you don't have boldness in your confession, you're lacking in something. I'm lacking in something. So it goes on and says, he passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Whew. I love it. Sitting on the right hand, he's passed through every step. He's made sure all my blessings that I need and everything I need to move forward is ready. He's been... Come on, God. God, thank you, Jesus, that you passed through it. And the problem is not him, it's us. And sometimes we don't understand our problem. And God says, I don't want you always to understand your problem. I want you to trust me. I want you to have confidence in me. So maybe you don't understand how you're walking through the heavens right now. Maybe it's a one step at a time. And you don't understand that this step didn't get you healed yet. But this step didn't get you healed yet either. But you got deeper with God. You got deeper with him. He says, I don't care if you're sick right now. I'm going to heal you. That's my promise. Don't worry about it. Take another step. Come on. Take another step. Don't let sickness stop you. Don't let anything stop you. But trust that I passed through it for you already. Amen. That I took you through every stress. I took you through every depression. I took you through every anxiety in life in Jesus' mighty name. He passed through. Verse 15 says this. For we do not have... A high priest who cannot sympathize. Blah, blah, blah. Somebody said a word for me. Sympathize. There we go. I will just use the word compassion. It has compassion with our weakness. Like it says, we do not have a God that doesn't have compassion for your weakness. That he actually sympathizes with you. I can't say that word. Hallelujah. Don't worry. Don't feel sad for me. I'm okay with it. I'll just use compassion. It's all good. Yeah. So because if you translate the word from Greek, it's compassion. So he says, I have compassion for your weakness and your infirmities. I have compassion for it. But was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He says, I have compassion for you because I've been there. I've been every step you took. Have confidence that I've been there. Be bold while you walk because I've been there. I've been through everything you ever will go through. And I did it without sins so that you and your sin and your error could be corrected. Amen. 
He's, he's been it. He's done it. And, and that, <laughs> hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, all points of tempted as we are. All points. None left out. When I, when I read this, I said, God, just think. I have enough problems. Never mind adding yours and then the next person. He all points. Like how many can you deal with your own problems or your spouses or your family, right? <laughs> and so when we do that, we walk in this place of saying, our God is greater than we can think if we could just believe. If we could just have confidence that he did what he said he did. And we could walk in the steps that he said we should walk. That we could be free from all things. Not it's freedom is not free from battle because that's part of our job here. The first problem Christians have, they don't want to battle. That's the first problem we have. We think, oh, God, heal me so I can be perfect, so I can be prosperous. Hallelujah. Use me, God, so I can get rich. <laughs> that's, not what he, that's not what he's talking about. Right? He, he says, you know what? I want you, I want to use you to win. I want you to use your Yeah. I want to use you to win your battles. I want to use you so that you can win those battles, so that you can have confidence when you walk in your circumstances that you're going to be a winner. That you walk in there with your shoulders up, ready for the fight, and know that you're the winner before you start to fight. That's the kind of confidence I want you to have. Because you, I don't have it here, but I, like I start wearing a Jesus necklace lately. Everywhere I go that people get offended with it, that's where I wear it. And so in church I don't wear it because you don't get offended that easy. But I wear it for one reason. It's because I, what, if anybody ever asks me why I wear Jesus on my necklace, I have it all prepared in here. Because I'm a bus driver and all those kind of things. So I'm going to be prepared for anything. <laughs> and I say, I'm going to say, he's my hero. You guys wear Avenger shirts. You wear Avenger necklaces. You wear Avengers everything. Why can't I have my hero, hero with me? Amen? Amen? I got a hero. His name is Jesus. Amen? Amen? You got a hero. And the fact is, mine is real. Yours isn't. <laughs> mine actually did what he said he did. And I have a hero. If I connect to him, I get his powers. Ha ha. Woo! Yeah. He gets me this light called the Holy Spirit, and I can do the things that he did. Can you do that with Superman? Well, that's not even an adventure, I don't think. But anyway. Woo! Can you do that with Captain America? Oh, I love those shows because I see Jesus in it. Amen? I do. But why not wear the real hero? And so I'm ready for it. I'm ready for any persecution. <laughs> and I'm so ready that... I go, if I go have Cafe Revival, and I hope you guys do more of that. I've been hearing some. Hey, I got a revelation. Oh, you got to hear this. I had a revelation the other day. And, and this guy sitting here, I'm not going to say him out loud because I'm alive, but I'm going to say just by him. <laughs> the 31. Um, <laughs> the 31. It's amazing what he's doing. You see, the thing is, some people don't understand why we're in revival because they were in revival already. When I talk to Dale, he's been in revival since he's been a Christian. <laughs> Oop, I said a name. 31 was in revival. <laughs> he was in revival since I met him, since he came here. So when God showed me it to me, he says, some people won't feel what I'm feeling. It's because they've been in it already. Oh, he's talking to more people about Jesus than I ever have. He's willing to take a U-turn for them. He sees somebody there and he says, oh, man, I don't need to. I am late, but I'm going to take a turn. Oh, man, I, that's bravery. That is revival. And so when I got excited about that and saying, maybe there's some that have been in it before I've been. I'm okay with that. Let's just join together and do greater things. Amen? Amen. That's really what it is about. Is that we have been in Cafe Revival before it was even named Cafe Revival. We've been in Red River Valley Revival before it even was Red River Valley Revival. God's been moving this whole year into major things. And God's getting people excited for what he's doing because we believe and we have confidence in what he said he would do. Amen? Whew. 
Sorry about putting your name publicly. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I didn't want to go through it and try to find a way to edit that. But anyway, hallelujah. Amen? Honors do where it's honors do. I believe that. I, would never, I don't want to be a pastor where I think I'm above anybody, ever. Because I see it. And most of you that know 31 know that about him. <laughs> hey, you 51s. No, no names, no names. <laughs> hey, I'm 48. Come on. <laughs> Woo. People think I'm so mature. I'm a year older than I am. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing? Woo. God is good. Amen. By the way, that was a, re a revelation I had that I interrupted in my message for. But it was worth it because I think that that sometimes we get so caught up in what we're going through, we wonder why people are not experiencing it because they experience it so long, they don't know what you're, what you're making a fret about. <laughs> and sometimes we just need to make frets about it together and say, hey, let's just go to another level. And since you know we're there, we're there. Let's do it. Amen? And this is it. And you know what? I, I'm going to be one person that will not confess in this season that we're waiting for revival. We are in revival. What are we going to do about it? We are in revival. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to let God use you to the point of you feeling used? <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> I've been feeling used, man. But I, I have a revelation and I love it. I have a choice to feel used. And I'm choosing to. I'm, 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 I'm making my weeks and days full for Jesus. That's what I'm doing. I am doing whatever I can. I'm going wherever I can. Wherever my heart says go, I'm going. It's cost me a little money on lunchtime sometimes because I said, got to go to Tim Hortons. I'm not sure if it was my stomach or God, but I had the way I had to go. <laughs> oh, I think he just wants to have fun today, God. Hallelujah. Then, but in most cases, I go there. I find out sometimes it was about food because I didn't see nobody there. Maybe I was just a face there for somebody. I don't know. But that sometimes I go there and I buy this food and I cook better, but I don't have time to cook. And... Um, Dale didn't cook for me that day, so. But either way, when you go there and you support the community and you become a smile, you become a living hope for somebody, and you go there with confidence saying, like 31, that he goes there with confidence to that place and he just says, hey, we're starting Saturday night, sir. Oh, my goodness. I wish I would have thought of that. I probably did. I just never had a nerve to do that. You know, that's, come on, I'm being honest. We probably had a lot of thoughts. But we've never been confident enough or, or, or to do it. We had no confidence, no boldness. And that's what believing is, boldness. Then I look at it and say, I want to believe like that guy does. Because he has boldness. I have boldness on my stage because I have the right here. But I have less boldness, <laughs> um, boldness. <laughs> boldness out there. I, uh, the confidence out there is way different than in here. Come on, that's why you guys need to be out there. Because I can't do it as good as you guys can. Because we're all called to something. Let's be confident. Let's be bold. And let's go forth and believe like never before. Amen? Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I'm back. And I literally feel God just saying, we're back. Like, God, we're here. We're back. Like, my spirit is back. I'm alive again. I'm excited again. I'm in the presence like never before again. Whoo! I've I, I been there many times, but we're back. We're back. Amen? We won't talk about 31 sisters. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. A whole, whole different revival going on there. But it's all good. Hallelujah. Amen? God is doing so much stuff. It's unbelievable. The things I'm hearing is crazy. I love crazy when I hear crazy. And excitement and ready to go like never before. Amen. <laughs> he said, let therefore come boldly and confidence in the, uh, to the throne room of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. C let us come. And this is what he says. He already passed through the heavens. Let us come to the throne room of grace with boldness and confidence. That's what that word boldness means, confidence. 
Let's go with confidence to the throne room of grace. God, today I need my healing. I'm coming boldly to you and saying, here I am, God. Sometimes there's strings attached. That's what we feel like, Edward, because we, know, we feel like if we get healed, then we've got to do more. Because you do, because you feel better, you've got to do more. You will want to do more, but we have this fear of being healed because we don't know what it looks like. So we're not coming to the throne room boldly no more. We're coming through there with fear, saying, what's going to happen with my finances? What's going to happen with me if I'm healed? What's going to happen with my time? What's going to happen with this or that? Do I really want to go there? Because that could change my life forever. The fear of the presence holds us back. The fear of Jesus Christ holds us back. Because we know if we're going to come to the throne room and we know if we're going to get his blessing, we know that life has to change forever because what he's done for us. And we'd be foolish not to want to change forever, but it's a fearful thing to change. And God says, oh, come with boldness. Come with confidence and I will be there. Amen. I'm going to believe, believe. People say, well, I've been there once confident, then come again. Well, I've been there twice, then come the third time, then the fourth time, then the fifth time. doesn't matter. It's all steps. It's all steps in the presence, all steps in the revival. That's what it is. It is a place where we need to go, amen? Falling behind here. Hallelujah. But it is revival night. <laughs> Might as well go along. Pray supernatural rest for my team. Hallelujah. But anyway, let's go here. <laughs> it goes on there and says, mercy finds uh, in a time of need. Obtain mercy. Obtain. Get it. I love what mercy is. Obtain kindness or goodwill towards the miserable. That's what, what obtain mercy is, that God finds kindness to the miserable, miserable people. That's what mercy is. It says, mercy is kindness or goodwill towards the miserable. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> the miserable. Somebody say it for me. Miserable. There you go. Okay, that's done with. But anyway, and the afflicted, joint with the desire to help them. That's what mercy is. He's coming in the person of need, the one that's in chaos, and says, I'm here for you in the time of need. That's what mercy is. That's the God that we serve. The God doesn't wait. Jesus Christ is not waiting for you to get better. He's not waiting for you to change your life. He's waiting for you to let him into your life. In this time of the total chaos that you're in, he's saying, I love you just as much in your chaos than when you're not in it. I love your chaos because I can make a change in your chaos, and your heart will change in the chaos. Your life will change if you let me in your chaos. Amen? That's mercy. Mercy, that a God that looks at us and doesn't look at our sin as a bad thing. He looks at it as a thing that can be changed. That's mercy. That's the kind of boldness we've got to walk in because he's, he's ready to handle his mercy. That's the kind of boldness we've got to come to the throne room for because he's waiting to handle his mercy. Because it's a normal thing for him. It's something that he loves to do because he loves us in spite of our condition. Amen? There's so many times... I have talked to people while saying, I gotta fix this before I come to Jesus. I gotta do this first. Maybe next year when I kind of fix things up because I don't know if I'm good enough. If you don't understand, you'll never be good enough until you understand that Jesus likes you're not good enough. Amen? How can he like you're not good enough? Because he knows that you're in it and through that crushing through that crushing that you've been through that you're going to be a, a very valuable asset to him that you're going to be an amazing masterpiece for him that's why he loves your chaos he knows that if you've been through something that you can change something he knows if you've been through something you can help someone else through something he knows that he knows if you've been in depression and you've been out of it he knows you can help somebody else he knows where you've been so that you can go he knows where you can go with that what kind of mercy is that amen do we look like that at people? No, we don't. Not, well, I, we try, but we don't always. We look at people so differently. We judge them so quickly, if you want to use the word judge, or, 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 or we run away from people that are miserable. You know, we, we just, we run away. I do. Sometimes. <laughs> I didn't say that aloud, did I? Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. That was just the first scripture. That's crazy. 
First John 4, 17, 18. Are you still good? It doesn't feel that long yet, does it? No, I don't think it is, but it could be. I have no idea what time we started. Those guys wish up long. That's why you feel so long. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. They brought us into the presence. Wasn't that great worship today? Wow, yes, awesome, awesome stuff. I love that. I love it, I love it, I love it. First John 4, 17 says this, and this is our love made perfect, that we have boldness or confidence in the day of judgment, that as he is, so also are we in this world. So we have to understand that if we come with this kind of love, with boldness and confidence, knowing that in the day of judgment that he is in the world just like we are, meaning that there is nothing but blessing, there's nothing but change happening, meaning that we can help somebody else so that their judgment can be lighter, meaning that we can see them saved, we can see them move forward like never before, amen? Because he is in the world, and we, maybe we're not of the world, but we're in the world, so we got to take advantage of it. And some people say, well, we don't belong here. Well, we do. We wouldn't be here if we didn't belong here. We're just not of it. We belong here for one reason, is to win, and to bring others to this place where they don't, are not of the world no more. To make, so this is the way I see it. We're in the world, but we're not of the world because we can't be of the world when we're in the dimension of the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit within us. We're born again believers. We are in the dimension of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so when we come in here and Jesus is in the world, but we're in his dimension within the world. So we are in the world, but we're not of the world because we walk around with this power this, that the average person cannot receive or perceive. Until they receive us as people, as loving and kindness. As we come to, to them with love, that's the only way that will change them is through the people. And so that's why we're not of the world, we're, not, we're in the world, but we need to be in the world with this dimension that we're in, within the world, so that we can change the world. Did that make any sense? Good. I thought I could almost wrap that. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh. So we need to wake up. And stop thinking that God's going to pop us out of here because we don't belong here. Because we do belong here. We're just not of it. Amen? Put up with it. Yeah, you got to vote this year. Vote. you got to get the right prime minister in your vote. You gotta, we got to do those things. Because we are in the dimension that can change things in this world. Because we're not of the world. If we're of the world, we couldn't change the world. Oh, man, that just came together now. I have no idea where that came from besides God. Hallelujah. I love when he does that. Because I, I, I talk to too many people, I think. And it bugs me the way some people talk. I say, get over it. Do something. You're in the world. Maybe you're not of it, but you're in it. Do something. Amen? Yes. Change the world. Change the presence around you. Change your influence. Your sphere of influence. You can do something with where God has put you, and you can make a life change around that. Amen? And I've seen it. It takes work, but we can do it. Amen? It takes work, but we can do it. My sphere, your sphere, it takes work. Wouldn't you agree? It takes work, but when we just push, people start asking questions. People start doing things and say, well, well, they don't know what to say. (laughs) Because I don't know what to say. Anyway, hallelujah. And so we go in this place that he says he's in the world, so are we. Confess it. Jesus is with us. He's within the world because of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So if he's in the world, stop complaining that you're in the world. And start moving and start being used by God like never before. Amen. Have confidence and boldness that every step you take that you can make a change. That you can break the systems of the enemy. Believe that in spite of what the, the, the track record shows of this world that we can still change. In spite of how many mistakes year after year after year has happened in Canada and has not allowed us to come where we need to be as a church. Allow that not to deter you. Because we are not of this world, that means we can make a change. Amen? Because we got to go boldly and confidently in the throne room of grace. Where is the throne of grace? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here. We're right at hand. We can reach the throne room, <laughs> the throne room of grace anytime we want to. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. My talking is bad today. Ha. Huh? That's probably because of anointing or something. I'll blame it on that. Hallelujah. Verse 18, there is no fear in love. I love that. There is no fear in love. The biggest mistake that we make that we're fearful is because we don't love. That's my biggest mistake is that we don't love the non-believers or we don't love 
love the homosexuals or love the people that need to be loved. We don't love. We, we kind of put them separate. We, don't, we shouldn't do that. We should put them back right in the spotlight and say, here, we love you. Because we're not of this world so that we can make a change in this life. We can make a life change into this world. All the people that abortions, everything, we can, we can stop coming against them and start putting them in the spotlight of love. If we could just do that somehow, we could see this world change quicker than we can imagine if we would just all say, the love can help change. You're fearful of what's you're carrying in your stomach. You're fearful of what's going to happen. You're fearful of finances. You're fearful of taking care of it. You're fearful of a mother or father. You're fearful. But if we can love, that removes fear. If we could just find the love of Jesus and that you've moved the fear, and you would not be fearful no more. Same thing with any kind of sin out there. We just have to love the people that are in the sin because it's not necessarily always a choice of sin. It's just something that we've been brought up in. Or we've been, we've been developed in it. And we don't even know it's sin because we've been brought up in it. How are, church, how are we ever going to change the world if we don't come in with boldness and confidence with the love of Jesus Christ? How are we going to ever, ever touch the hearts that God has created every human nature, every human out there for us to be, lo- to, to be loved and for them to have a chance of their lifetime to meet Jesus? Amen? That's the kind of confidence. That's how we believe. We believe because we go with boldness in what God has put in our hearts. And most times we don't believe or we say we believe but we don't experience it because we're scared to go boldly forward. I'm talking to myself, just as much as anybody else. When I've been putting the series together, God wants us to love like never before. He wants me to be confident in this word. <laughs> this word, he wants me to be so confident that I trust it. That when I read it, that it happened then, it can happen now. That if he healed somebody then, he will heal somebody now. If he delivered somebody from a demon, somebody will be delivered now. If he inner healed somebody and cut the roots off of something, it will be cut off today. If there's somebody raised from the dead, it will be done today. The ears open will open today. If I just go confidently before him and believe that he's actually said who he has said he is, that he actually died for what he said he died for and rose for, that he actually went to Hades with the keys and released the very authority of the enemy so that we have authority over it. That's the kind of God we serve. A God that makes the lame walk. A God that makes the arms stretch out and become whole. The God that works through the disciples and by gate beautiful and just has to lift out the hand and say, rise up and take what we have. That's Christ Jesus. This is the kind of boldness they had. They went in there and they said, okay, I don't have money. I left it at home on purpose because I want you to receive some money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on, I leave money at home on purpose when I go home to the city sometimes. So I only have a card. I don't have no cash. You know, I think homeless people should get those debit card machines, you know. Just kidding. But anyway, <laughs> it would be easier for us to give money to them these days because we just can't do it. But either way, they, either they left it at home because they were not poor people. They just didn't carry money around that day, I would imagine. And said, we don't have what you asked for, but we have something that you need. If you would just take my hand up, take my hand and rise up and walk. Boldness. You know, it's so easy to give a substance. It's so easy to give change to somebody. Substance. It's so easy to give, give, give actual something you can see in your hand, but it's so hard to have boldness that it's within here that can be given to that person. That takes boldness. To have a lame man that's been there for who many knows how many years, but many years, been lying there, going there, every, their family brought him there just to raise money because he couldn't get a job. That, to, you know, come on. That, uh, how many of us would go there and say, there's a crippled guy, we should go up to Todd Whitewood, but who, who else would, right? You're like, who else would go there and love on somebody and not judge them for where they're at and just not blame it on the devil right away and, and just come and love on that person and say, rise up and walk. Who would have that kind of confidence? That's, that's true believing. I'm telling you, that's true believing. And so what they did is so cool. They rise him up, and he walked, and he choked him, and he danced, and he, you know, just to think, that's not scientific. There's no scientific anywhere in that. 
You can't scientifically say his bones somehow got restructured or his muscles. There's no science in that. It's 100% miracle, 100% Jesus Christ, 100% by the power of the Holy Spirit that made his muscles grow instantly and to rise him up because that Peter and John have boldness enough to go up to them and say, come on, let's get up and walk. They went to get beautiful every day. There was a season and there was a timing. We are too busy missing the opportunity of our timing. They went there and they said they, this, they went there daily to get, get, get beautiful. And they saw him there every day. Probably every day had some change to give him. But this time, no. <laughs> no change, man. I must have given him to the last poor guy. But anyway, either way. Whew. But guess what he did for that person because of his boldness? He gave him feet. He gave him an opportunity to work. He gave him an opportunity to make money. He gave him an opportunity to live. Our lack of boldness is bringing lack of living. Lack of life to the person that's waiting for life. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hopefully you're not getting tired of me yet because this is going way crazier than I thought. Let's go ahead to good. It says, there is, no love, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment and he who fears does not have perfect love. And when I looked at this, it's just like, oh boy. Oh boy. If I fear, I don't have perfect love. Oh boy. Oh boy. No wonder why that person didn't feel loved. No wonder, because I was a fear in that situation. No wonder why they got anxious around me. Oh boy. Have you ever thought that way? Like, seriously, fear... Stop me from life changing in somebody else's life. The fear of approach, the fear of whatever, stop me from having perfect love for somebody else. So we need to deal with our fear. We need to walk with boldness like never before. Amen? Believing is having boldness. John, <coughs> sorry, um, <coughs> John 5, 1 John 5, 14 to 9, uh, and 15, it says, And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that we're asking anything according to his will, he hears us. Everybody say his will. Yeah. I, I, I don't like this scripture for a lot of reasons that people quote it for. Whatever I desire, I get. No, you don't, you don't get hardly anything you desire. You only get what God desires. <laughs> only his will. So until you start having confidence in him, you're never going to believe the right thing. You're never going to ask for the right thing. If you don't, have, if you don't commit in him, you don't trust in him, and you don't have confidence in him, you're probably, most of the time, 95% of the time, asking for the wrong things because you have the wrong desire. <laughs> oh, that was a hard one. But if we truly believe, truly commit, truly trust, truly have confidence, then when we ask in his will, watch God show up. Watch God Heal. Watch God do miracles. Watch God release giftings. Watch God bring masterpieces to life. Amen? Woo! That's good stuff. Have confidence to him. And he will hear us. Confidence means this in this sense. It's free, fearless, cheerful, and courage while we do it. Amen? Hallelujah. We need to do that. Verse 15 says this, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that he, that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Everybody say of him. Yeah. See, the biggest problem is this. I do believe this, including myself, and I have to always change my prayer life. I'm too busy asking for my, my, my my cooking gear or whatever else. He says, no, that you just got to go buy that. Stop asking for that. Um, <laughs> talk to your wife. But I don't want to, God. I want you to give it to me. <laughs> there might be a no there. <laughs> but, you know, there are some things you ask God for, and there's some things you just have to make a decision on. But the fact is this, that when we do this, petition, where was I? Petition what you desire of him. What do we desire of him? His relationship, his love, his healing, his deliverance, whatever it is of him. Amen? Of him. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good. <clears throat> oh, 
Man, I'm going to try to finish up here for you guys. <sighs> My last scripture. We can get our piano player up there. I will get a few minutes of, a few minutes of sounding good with the piano. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, Colleen is an answer to prayer. She really is. And so is my whole worship team, but the piano is an answer to my prayer. Because all 13 years I was wishing for a piano player just so that I could have music behind my ears when I preach. <laughs> and now we do have it, so that's awesome. Yeah. It's an answer to prayer to me. It's an answer to prayer to me. It's not, not because, well, part of it is because I desire, I watch other people say, man, they, they get so good when music goes on. That's when all the anointing happens is when the music's in the background. And I say, okay, I need that. And here we go. We got it. Hallelujah. And she is anointed. Ephesians 3, 10 to 13 says this. So that now the rulers and the powers of the heavenlies might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So that now the rulers and powers in the heavenlies might be known by the church. Everybody say church. That's us. Church is people that connect and are the body. The body is not people that don't connect because then, there's, then, it's, then it's a paralyzed body. Church is when body connects. That's the only way church happens is when people work together. There's no other way around it. You can't be a living church. You can't be a living, I can't even say, I won't say it because I might say the total wrong word for it, but the living heart of a church by yourself. I mean, you think that you're a church when you're sitting by yourself, you're wrong because the body of Christ is a body. It's not an individual of Christ. And so when we are working together, that's what church is created to be. When we join together, we see his work together. Amen? He says, the heavens be known by the church. How can the, these rulers and these enemies be known? It's when the church rises up. It's when the church rises up and says, we have boldness enough to admit and to come against what is coming against us. And we're willing to fight it. Amen? And it says, in the wisdom of God, 11, according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And whom we may have boldness, which means confidence, and access with confidence. Two different words here, boldness and confidence. And this, that last confidence is have reliance on God. When you have confidence, you rely on his presence. You rely on who he is. When I have confidence, when I go boldly, and I've done it, I've seen, have you ever been a new Christian before? You better be. If you're not, then come up here because you've never been a Christian. You've never been a new one. But if you have ever been a new Christian before, man, I mean, I'm telling you, when I became a Christian, I had boldness. I went boldly until, my, until all the mature people say, slow down. It's so stupid of us. Like, don't slow down, but come in order maybe, right? Like, you're way wacko and out of order, but, you know, maybe come in order with that power with that excitement, right? Sometimes people are totally out of order and it makes pe people cringe. But we, we have stopped these people that have these boldness, right? Get excited again. Wouldn't it be crazy if we got newborn people here and they got excited and bold in Christ Jesus? Wouldn't it be crazy if we just went to the back to the first love and pretended we were born again today and became bold in Christ Jesus and had confidence in Him like we had when we first loved Him? Wouldn't that be just crazy with the information and the knowledge and the maturity that we have that we would have in our spirit the first love experience again? Wouldn't that be crazy if we would just be bold enough to love Jesus enough to get out there to say it enough and to preach it and to say it and heal it and deliver it? Come on, wouldn't that be amazing if we would get into that place again and say, I'm going back to my first love because I'm coming with boldness. Wouldn't that be crazy if I could just get into that place where I was just radical because I believed what happened. Wouldn't it be crazy if I would have all this teaching that would stop me from believing what Jesus did the first time for me? That's the kind of crazy I want. I want to get to the place of first love of Jesus and not put this knowledge, but put mankind knowledge aside and say, here I come, Jesus. Here I come, Holy Spirit. Use me. around there man. through his faith that's how we have confidence verse 13 says this for this reason I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you which is his in 
you know, uh, is your glory. For this reason, I desire that you faint not. Because those tribulations you are going through, and I do apologize if I'm coming across that way, but every one of us have been going through tribulations, some are going through some right now. But it's for the sake of his glory. Not that, that God is putting you through them, but God says, I'm gonna bring my glory out of that situation. Just push. Be bold enough to go forward. Watch me take care of that and find the glory in it. Amen. God is so good. You know, part of all this too, I wanna ask you guys to have confidence enough to give today. Be bold enough to give. Like, there's all kinds of ways for me to preach giving. But the fact is, this church needs finances. Any little bit helps for us to move forward. It really does. And so, I would ask, like, this is part of the message. And people say, oh, no, here it goes again. I do that too. Ah, oh, finances. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not sitting on these chairs because nobody paid for them. This building is still under mortgage. It's just facts. But the fact is this, God says, sow and you shall reap. The fact is this, is that be a cheerful giver. Purpose your heart that you become a giver. Purpose your heart. And it doesn't mean, oh, oh man, I feel guilty. I have no money along or nothing like that. Praise God that we have a debit machine. <laughs> I have no money in there. Well, if you have no money in there, then you have no excuse. I understand. We have a debit machine that gives you, you can, unlimited we just got it. It works really great. Debit, credit card, you name it. And Jacob's back there. He'll take care of you if you want to give that way. We have these ways of giving. We have debit square at the booth. It's just simple. You put your card. If it's under dollar, 100, you can tap it. If you want to give $1,000, you just put your chip in. And then you can do that too. And then you can give through e-transfer. And you can give through PayPal. If you just go onto that, our, our webpage, you'll find it right there ready for you. There's so many ways. Or there's envelopes in the chair, the old-fashioned way. <laughs> it still works. You can actually put your cash in there or a check in there. It still works. Just write out to Daily Life Church. Or people online. You can just go press uh, the Facebook Learn More button. There used to be a donate button. Uh, somehow they got rid of it and I can't get it back. But there, that Learn More button is a donate button. Just go press it. It'll take you right to PayPal. So uh, ahead of time. And if you can't give, you know what? The biggest power that you have is pray for financial breakthrough for this place. Pray that God will bless this place. Pray that God will move greatly in this new season that we're in, okay? How many can at least pray for this? People say, well, and often I don't know how you can mix the two together, give and pray. The fact is this, is that sometimes we need to pray first before we can give. That's just facts. Sometimes you first have to believe and trust in what God is doing. But we do appreciate your support every time, every week, every week. We haven't... We, we're caught up now, but we haven't met our budget for years. And we love to meet our budget. We would love to just say, hey, here we are, God. And let's push all the way through. And I hope I'm coming love, across loving, not pushy, because that's not where my heart is. My heart is never to be pushy, because I've been there where I couldn't give. I know that. So if you can't give, you can't give. That's understandable. But if it's in your heart to give, and you know you should in your heart, and you, and, and you say, no, that's, let's get past that, and let's have some courage today. And let's have some boldness and confidence. And when we give, God will meet our needs. Amen? With that, let's go ahead and give.